Spanish teacher would have give something to language learner to read, what strategy should I use there? So a typical way is read the text and answer the questions at the end. I'm going to do a little discussion, and then if I'm really good, I might apply it to your real now, life. If I were language learners, and again, I keep putting this in there, maybe for all struggling learners, how about starting this from a different perspective? And this is funds of knowledge, right? Apply this to real life in the introduction. Have a discussion about it. Answer questions, and then read the text. So it's the really reversing the whole process. And this, again, was another big aha among them. Another strategy, learning locks, okay? And uh, I, I, a little sidebar, but I'll throw it in there. I'm about to defend my dissertation. It's all about cognitive coaching. Huh. Okay. And when I saw learning logs the first time when Joan presented this, it's all a technique that we use in cognitive coaching. Uh, it's to get kids to start looking at their understanding and, uh, and their own cognition. And so this is a very powerful technique. Uh, it certainly works here um, for ELLs. So it's looking at things, what did I understand, what are some new or difficult words, what's a question I want to know. And then post-it notes was another little strategy uh, that, that teachers could use with their students where they make notations if they can't write in their textbooks. Again, in our reading apprenticeship, cognitive coaching, Chris knows this, he was through the training, we actually give the kids text that they can write in the margins and we don't do that to textbooks, obviously. So this is another way to do that. It's all part of the learning log and getting them to, um, to ask questions about what they're reading so that they can eventually get the answers to that and come away with much better comprehension. And then study buddies work. And again, this is right out of the world of cooperative learning where you work with somebody else and uh, you addressed that, I think, Lori, right? Yep. Uh, so this is a, a powerful way uh, and you can incorporate the things that you're doing with your vocabulary lists uh, and the learning logs, et cetera, with your study bible. Here's a passage that we use as an example. So for an ELL kid, this is frightful. Uh, very dense and the kind of things that you probably don't have to spend a lot of time with, with kids because they'll get this in conversation. Um, and then we start to get into the words that now you can't take for granted. And this, this, this again, this website breaks it down, and you start to see some things that um, you know most kids have, have been exposed to. Compound, as an example, they get that in elementary school. But for an English language learner, you may need to go back and you know kind of build that idea with them, and not just accept that oh they know what that is. And then there's the words, of course, that are off the list. So these are the science words that are germane to science. So we don't speak about you know, heterographs or carbohydrate, biochemical carbohydrates and all these other kinds of things, photosynthesis, a less breakdown of the kind of activity that you would end up doing as you um, came away having taken some text, and, and it's the text addressing something important that you have to teach where you know that instead of just hitting these words, which may be the bold-faced terms in the book, you actually, with the ELL kids, need to cover this. And again, I would say with yeah. a lot of struggling yeah. words. Yeah. And even some common words may need so, some we go through some, some strategies before reading the input. You use the tutor. You give the words, as I said, to the kids to study. There's another strategy to use. Uh, make a list of the new concepts, give students a chance to translate into their native language, something Joan just hit on. If possible, make a recording of the words so students can recognize them orally. That's a whole other component of it. Uh, again, with some of them, they're hearing the pronunciations the first time. And I think this is on here, Joan. Here it is. Uh, there's actually online tools to do that. So when you plug in photosynthesis, it actually will say the words so the kids can use a uh, way to take these academic words, which are in that middle column, and have the kids perhaps um, come to their native language and encounter how would you say that in your language, and then give them a common word so that they can start knowing, hey, when I see encounter, I know that means to meet. Or when I see observe, or when, I, when I see the word observe, I know that means to watch.